after being delayed, delayed again, and delayed once again, me, baby, one more time. The King's Man finally hits theaters later this month. So let's talk about it. The King's Man is a prequel to the previous two Kingsman films. It takes place during World War I and shows how the Kingsman organization was established. So like most people, I found the original Kingsman to be a nice breath of fresh air that just injected a huge dose of energy into the spy genre and had a very distinct, interesting style. Now, I wasn't such a big fan of the sequel, and when they announced a prequel, I wasn't quite sure what to make of that, but I was intrigued. And then the movie got delayed for like two years because of reshoots, the Disney Fox acquisition, and then COVID, of course. So I didn't know what to make of that. I went into this movie pretty cautiously optimistic, hoping to have a good time, but nervous that it could be a bit of a train wreck. Real quick, before I let you know what I thought about it, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. What's your excitement level for this film, and what did you think of the previous two Kingsman films? And let's get started talking about the good. And right off the bat, this is a prequel that stands on its own own. It builds out the world of the Kingsmen, but it's not reliant on the previous two films. You can watch this one without having seen the previous films, and it works as this World War I era adventure. There's some Easter eggs here and there that you might miss, but it's all very peripheral. It's not at the core. It's a movie that has its own tone. It doesn't copy the template or the formula of the previous two films and just put it in World War I. No, it's its own story story, its own storytelling style, and most importantly, it's a prequel that doesn't feel the need to answer a bunch of questions that I wasn't asking in the first place. And in reality, this movie feels a lot more like Matthew Vaughn's X-Men First Class as opposed to feeling like the Kingsman films. Not only because it's a period piece film like X-Men First Class, but just the scope and size of the storytelling. Likewise, the fact that it's a movie that injects comic book characters into historical events. There's just a lot more in common with X-Men First Class than Kingsman, though it does have the style, the exaggerated characters, and the action of the Kingsman films. Speaking of the lively characters and action, once again, Matthew Vaughn injects this film with his unique way of crafting characters, where you have several of them that have very grounded personalities and character arcs, but you also have these over-the-top villains that just steal every scene that they're in. And when it comes to the action, it's just as stylized, choreographed in a way that it looks very cool, but shot with wide-angle shots so you can see everything that's taking place. So you get that Kingsman style with a very different type of story. The two standouts here for me would be Ralph Fiennes in the lead and then Ross Putin as one of our mini villains in the film. Time to dance on your graves. Now when it comes to Ralph Fiennes, of course he's this world-class actor, and that's what makes him so interesting in the role, because he can bring the dramatic chops and gravitas to the film, but then seeing him in these over-the-top action sequences doing ridiculous things is inherently interesting the same way it was fun and entertaining to see someone like Colin Firth do that in the previous two films. They ground it with a gravitas and the novelty of them in action puts a big gigantic grin on your face. Then when it comes to Rasputin, he's just a classic over-the-top Kingsman character with all these weird quirks. Every scene that he's in is ridiculous. When he starts fighting, it's like this dance fighting style. It's choreographed to perfection and highly entertaining to watch. But everyone in the cast is great. Those were just the two standouts. Now you'll go into a Kingsman movie expecting the action to be energetic, stylized, and a ton of fun, and to have a bunch of these big, bold, lively characters. But what was surprising about this film is that it's actually a very somber war film that has a bunch of deep emotions inside of it. When it comes to World War One, this wasn't this noble or heroic war, and so it's a film that's a spy film, it's a war movie, but it's also anti-war, and it's a very personal film at the same time, because it's about this father 
wanting to take care of his family. It's about a man who was previously a soldier that wants to be a pacifist, that he's not for the war and he's doing everything in his power to end the war so that we can have peace. And so it just adds an extra layer of emotion to everything that's taking place. It's also a film that has some truly shocking moments that take place. And the reason that they're shocking is that the movie does the hard work of setting up the conflicts, the tensions, the misunderstandings, and making you care about the characters so when things happen to them, it matters to you as an audience member. So I went into this film expecting to enjoy it, but I had pretty modest expectations because it had been delayed for so long and the trailers hadn't fully blown me away. But I was really surprised at just how much I enjoyed this film. It has the action and characters that I expected and I wanted, but it also had a lot more emotion and a stronger message than I was expecting when I entered the film. So I really enjoyed this film, but I don't think the film's going to be for everyone. So let's move on to the mixed aspects of the film. And the big thing here is that this is a very different film from the previous two Kingsman films. The originals were these over the top exaggerated versions of James Bond. And this is exaggerated stylized over the top version of World War One historic fiction. And I don't think it's a one to one comparison that everybody will just transfer over and enjoy what this film is offering just because they liked the previous two films. I think it is a bit more niche. And for that reason, I think some people will like this film even more and it will bring some new people in, but it also probably be pretty off putting to a lot of people that just like that modern day setting, eggsy, the rock and roll, the fun. This is a much more somber film because World War One is not really fun subject matter. It was a very tragic, horrifying war. And somewhat to that point, this is a movie that by its very nature won't sit well with a lot of people. What I mean by that is that it's taking historic events. Real people died. Real people made choices that led to the deaths of millions of people. And the movie just uses them as characters for this historic fiction that they're telling that's meant to be popcorn entertainment for the masses. That probably won't sit right with, with a lot of people in light of the reality that this movie is presenting in this exaggerated, over-the-top, stylized fashion. Final thing you gotta talk about on this one is that there is a mid credit sequence that is worth sticking around for. From there, let's move on to the bad. And the big thing here is that the movie struggles at times to balance everything that it's trying to do. At its core, it's this very personal story about a man and his family and his convictions. But it's also a story about World War I and it's trying to make statements about war itself. And it's also a prequel to The Kingsman. So it's trying to do all of these things at the same time. And that leads to some uneven pacing where it's covering a lot of time throughout the course of the film. It at times will like linger on a sequence and then rush through some other things to try and get everything in place. Tonally, it can feel a bit unbalanced because in, because in one sequence, you'll have Rasputin licking someone's leg and then dance fighting. And then just a couple minutes later, you'll have a man musing about man's inhumanity to man and how nihilistic trench warfare is. And so it's a movie that's just trying to do a lot of things and the mix probably won't work for a lot of people. And it was, it was testing me at times. I was like, man, those two sequences are right next to each other. I'm not sure how I feel exactly about that. And then finally, while the movie does have a bunch of effective twists and turns, there's one plot point throughout the film that's treated as a big reveal that's pretty well telegraphed from the very beginning. But overall, this is a film that I thoroughly enjoyed, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's quite a few Kingsman fans that don't connect with this film as much. Real quick, before I give you my final thoughts on the film, remember to join me down below in the comment section. Let me know your excitement level for the film as well as your thoughts on the previous two Kingsman films. Also, I will be ranking all three Kingsman films as soon as this film is released in theaters. Overall, this film was just as entertaining as I'd hoped, but I was surprised at how many layers it had and how emotional it turned out to be. It is a more niche film. It won't be for every fan of the previous two films, but as for me, 
This might be my favorite of the three films. My general score will be a B plus on the entertainment scale and eight out of 10. And I would say you should go check out this film if you liked the previous two Kingsman films or if you're into highly stylized historic fiction. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want another video from me, you can see one right there and keep talking movies too much.